Greg Peterson here, and I want to thank you for listening to the Urban Farm Podcast. We wouldn't be able to keep doing these great shows without you. So as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you access to a list of our top 10 episodes I personally find most inspiring. If you enjoy the Urban Farm Podcast but don't have time to listen to every one, then you will love this list. Although all our guests have great information to offer, if you are short on time, these 10 are must-listens. To get access to the top 10 most inspiring podcast episodes, text FARMER to 44222. That's FARMER to 44222. And enjoy listening. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the grow your own food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Constantine Bizans of Aloha to talk about his experience with the benefits of plant-based eating. Health enthusiast, avid athlete, and Austrian entrepreneur, Constantine founded Aloha in January of 2014 with a mission to help others live healthier, happier lives. Along with his team, Constantine creates real food products made from simple, pure, sustainably sourced ingredients, offering accessible solutions for everyone to maintain a healthy lifestyle. His inspiration for founding Aloha came from studying Ayurvedic medicine in India, a holistic approach to health and wellness centered on the balance of mind, body, and spirit, combined with his belief that nutrition is the foundation of overall wellness. This philosophy, fueled by his frustration with weak regulation, conflicting messages, and lack of quality products and information in the food and health industries, laid the groundwork for Aloha. Welcome to the show today, Constantine. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at now? Yeah, so I grew up in Austria, a little country in Europe, and um, I was an entrepreneur all my life. Actually, when I was 14, I started my first company, and I kept on doing this. I'm now 43, and uh, my goal was to always kind of like do cool things, create, build companies. Some of them kept me really busy. The last company, we hired 1,000 people in, in three years uh, in, in four different countries around the world, so wow. it was kind of a crazy ride and I I kind of struggled a little bit with um, maintaining a healthy lifestyle while building all these companies. So I started five companies. Uh, The last company we sold to eBay, uh, again, it was kind of like a a, a real like sort of like a rocket ride and I I struggled with like being healthy and living the life that I wanted to live while building all these companies Uh and then we got sort of lucky, like eBay came and they bought the company and then I had to, I had some time to, to do something different, uh, different than just working. And my passion was always around kite surfing. I love kite surfing, but never had time to do it. So I decided to kind of like pick some spots around the world uh, that, that I always wanted to go and, and combine that with kite surfing and also combine it with inviting my family. So, uh, family members that I also didn't usually have a chance to hang out with too much. So I have three sisters and father and mother, and I, I told them that they can choose a spot where they want to go, and I invite them, and then we spent, the obligation was that they spend minimum three weeks with me. Oh, nice. So my father came to, father came to Brazil, mother came to uh, Thailand and Burma, sister one came to Bali, sister two came to Maui, and sister three came to, to um, the Caribbean. Uh, so that, that was amazing. I'll bet. But then um, I also got involved into uh, with an expedition where we kite surfed uh, between Alaska and Russia in the Bering Strait, right. which was a rather cool endeavor <laughs> in that sense of the word uh, because it's close to the Arctic Circle right. and really remote, and there's almost like no food. But the challenge was that we actually had to last on the water for up to like 12 hours per day without any breaks. And uh, so I had to think a lot about, like, what do I put into my body, what is healthy. And unfortunately, again, like there, I couldn't buy anything. So I had to buy a ton of packaged food. 
Right. And I was really disappointed with the offering in the market. Like everything that I bought was like full with chemicals and, and right. like artificial stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like an initial frustration that I found with like um, products that were on the market that are packaged like snacks and, and bars and stuff like that. But then I also had the opportunity to spend more time in India and to dive into the Indian Ayurvedic philosophy. And I had no idea what Ayurveda is. <laughs> Initially, I thought it's a hair shampoo, but Ayurveda. But uh, luckily, I was uh, surrounded with amazing people in India, like Ayurvedic doctors, that opened my eyes and, and really ignited like a strong passion that, that, um, that I developed over the course of time sp staying in India uh, about Ayurveda. So what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda means basically in the Indian philosophy that the science of life. Right. And they believe that happiness is a result of a balance between mm. a healthy nutrition, right. a good nutrition, which is kind of like geared towards your body type. Um, and then they gave me advice on what kind of exercise I should do based on my body type. And then they, they, the doctors even gave me advice on, on relationships. They told me I should have more quality relationships. Um, and many uh, not so quality relationships and um, meditation and mindfulness was also a big uh, part of the, of the of the practice. So they believe happiness is a, is a balance between eating clean food, moving the body, embracing mindfulness and spirituality, and also having great relationships. And the more I practiced that, the, uh -huh. that balance, the better I felt. And I felt amazing. Um, and then I came to the U.S. and I wanted to maintain that lifestyle. But it was very difficult. Like I, I came to New York, and <laughs> yeah. we all know New York is a little bit of a crazy place. All right. And um, even like when it, like when I looked at food, I was very confused. Like I, the, the good thing about New York is you have access to Whole Foods and to all these like amazing retailers here. But the bad news was every time I entered Whole Foods, like I'm, I'm I got kind of confused. All these brands say I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. Yes. Then I showed some of my products, some of the products that I bought to to nutritionists, and they told me, you know what, it says it's healthy, but it's actually not that healthy because do you know how much sugar is in there? Like added sugar, or do you know yep. that there is actually what they call natural flavor, which is another word for artificial flavor? <laughs> or do you know, do you know there are some fillers in there that you probably don't want to put into your body on a daily basis? So it was kind of eye opening, yep. and then. My nutritionist, that I actually paid quite a lot of money. He he told me, don't buy anything, uh, don't buy any of these products. Here are some brands that I would recommend, or some products, and those were like kind of doctors brands, and they were really expensive. And I, I, I was really annoyed about that fact because I was like, okay, I have to spend a lot of money to get access to the knowledge, right? And and then to products that not everybody has access to. So that that was for me kind of like the aha moment, and I said, okay. I, I realize people want to live healthy, but there's still confusion. I decided to create a brand that helps people to live healthier and create products that are actually really good for you uh, without any added bullshit. Uh -huh. And <laughs> our mission is to basically, that's how Aloha was born. And our mission with Aloha is to, to help people and help everybody to, to get access to the highest quality plant-based mm -hmm. nutrition on the one hand side, but also inspire people to learn a little bit what, what I learned uh, in India about like the, the life in balance between yeah. eating clean food, but also moving the body and embracing mindfulness and spirituality and having great relationships. So this yeah. is kind of like our brand philosophy. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a little bit of my story and how I got started with Aloha. Nice. So we're going to get back to Aloha in a minute, but you said something that I put in the category of epic. And it's not often that I find somebody that actually started in business earlier than I did. Because I started my first business here in Phoenix, Arizona at 15. Mm -hmm. and that was... You did by one year. That was... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was for me that I'm 55. So that was uh, 40 years ago. Awesome. Yeah. So what business were you running at the age of 14? That was a funny thing. So I always wanted to become a photographer. And I was volunteering for, that was back in the days when I was living in Vienna in Austria, I was volunteering for photographers over there. So oh. I tried to learn the skills. Right. And um, one day in my school, I was kind of like 
voted, I don't know, head of school for the kids, a representative of the kids in the schools. Like there was a, a school photographer that came to, to take pictures of the, of the classes right. um, for the yearbooks. And that guy was a rather arrogant guy and he took really bad pictures of, of the kids and he charged a lot of money. And I felt, hey, I think I'm less arrogant. I probably can do better pictures than you. Uh -huh. And I could charge half of the price. And I was even like at that time, I was processing the pictures in, in my dark room in the basement. And um, so I kind of like took a little bit what I learned from the fashion photographers um, uh -huh. to the to the schools. And I, I took like kind of cool pictures of the kids um, with like their friends and their you know, in different constellations and we had like model kind of like set up and, and film requisites of background. Anyway, so it turned out to become a business. I, nice. I usually did 20 pictures and I sold 10 of it. So it was, it was, it was fun. Nice, 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 nice. Well, I used to here in Phoenix, I used to clean surface and build fish ponds and I actually kind of got into it the same way you did. I helped somebody else and when it was time, I, uh, you know, started doing it on my own. So how cool is that? So fast forward, oh. fast forward to Aloha. What is Aloha? Give me a give me a thirty second elevator talk on what El Aloha is. Aloha is a lifestyle brand, but it's a mission and purpose driven, passion driven brand. And our goal is to make food products that are actually good for people. And we our products are full of good for you ingredients. Everything is plant-based, certified organic, mm -hmm. and we skip all the bad stuff. So nice. we, basically, um, I was a little selfish. I created those products for me. <laughs> there like, you go. I literally, con I consume an Aloha product every hour because we have different products. We have teas, uh, functional teas. We have bars, plant-based protein bars. We have mm -hmm. plant-based uh, superfood powders, uh, greens. Uh, we have supplements. And yeah, so and we have chocolate, superfood packed chocolates. Ooh, um, nice. So our goal was to to make healthy living somewhat also more a little bit more aspirational because I found like there are some good quality brands, but they're a little bit more crunchy granola. But mm -hmm. they were like, unfortunately, like the millennials and and you know like the 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 sexy brands out there these days are called. Red Bull, or they are called Pepsi or Coke. I mean, Super right. Bowl was sponsored by Pepsi, right? And and those are the biggest advertisers. And unfortunately, they have the, the worst for you products. But I didn't find like a sort of like a a cool brand with a good marketing message uh, that appeals to a broader group of people, not just to a few select. That also has good for your products, and that's really what we are trying to do with Aloha. We want to make healthy living sexy. We want to give everybody, all the middle America. Those people, like we all know the problem here in, in the States, that the majority of the people have uh, weight issues and yeah. our obesity is a big issue because they don't even have access to anything healthy. Or if it's healthy, it's, it, tastes, it tastes like it's healthy. And, and we want to we wanna make products uh, that, that, that are healthy but don't necessarily taste like crap, but taste actually really good. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's really our, our approach. A big reason that I do what I do is to educate people around health. And, you know, I do that through teaching people how to grow their own food. And one of the things that I've said for years and my uh, longtime listeners on the podcast, this is not news to you, but I like to reiterate it anyway. And I've actually checked this out with nutritionists and doctors. And I had a molecular biologist on the show recently, and I blew that, this past him. And so what I tell people is that there are three things in our culture that cause 100% of the disease. And I know that's a bold statement, but it pretty much works out to be true. And that is what you put in your body, so what you eat, what you put on your body or environmental toxins and stress. Yep. And yep. you're really addressing uh, a big piece of that by making sure that you have clean food so we're not putting in you know environmental toxins in and i'm assuming that your products are highly nutritive can you talk about that yes yes absolutely i so by the way i totally agree with uh, what you said about in and on and 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 stress in the body on on the body of stress i think mm -hmm. that's that's a huge those are three huge issues but but uh, that's also our belief and that's what i learned in in India, uh, on my travels around the world, like 
food is the foundation of health and we are what we eat. Yeah. And, and, and it's so important. And I, I actually believe that we can all live happily and healthily a hundred years and longer. And, and uh, there is actually one study and many of you probably heard about it. It's called the blue zones. Dan Bittner observed the oldest people in the world. Many, uh, some of them grow, uh, turn older than 120 years yeah. old and they live in so-called blue zones areas uh, around the world. One is in Okinawa. Another one is in Costa Rica. Another one is in Sardinia. There are several blue zones, and he found out that they all have a few things in common. And one thing that they all had in common is they all eat mainly a plant-based diet, uh, which is high in nutrients. And they mm. eat meat only at, for special occasions, like uh -huh. when there's celebrations or something, but they don't have it like incorporated in their daily uh, diet. They all eat a lot of nuts and uh, flesh healthy fats and apparently people who eat nuts and healthy fats eat, like the study says that they live up to 10 years longer so so I I'm, I, I was fascinated by by this um, diving a little bit further a, a, a good relief was that he found out that all these people drink alcohol on a daily basis at least like a glass of wine or yep. sake so that was mm -hmm. that made me happy <laughs> and to me, like I, I feel like, luckily, all the millennials and, and the younger generation, they care more about what they put into their bodies. Yeah, um, I'm sure everybody here on the podcast reads is, is super smart about reading labels, and they want to understand what they put into their body. But again, like even like on my personal example, I was interested, and I thought I'm a healthy guy. Um, I just broke the world record kite surfing the Bering Strait, and I had some products that I thought are healthy, and then. Some of the doctors and nutritionists that that I surrounded myself with, they, they told me this is this is like, do you know that natural flavor is not a word for artificial flavor? I had no idea. Yeah. Do you know that whatever this kind of like filler is is actually really bad and 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 causes whatever leaky gut or something? So there's so many things that even like people who think like like I like I'm sure some people understand, but the broad population that doesn't know it, and that's why I said okay, let's make sure. We filter out everything that's bad, and, and we stay as close to the source of, of modern nature mm -hmm. as possible. And 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 this is, I think, how everybody should eat: like less processed, um, as little as possible processed. Um, although at the same time, like some convenience food and packaged food is, is we all eat it because we travel a lot and right. airports is air food desert as well. And if, if there's foods or snacks uh, that are processed, I think it's it's our it's our obligation to make sure that there's as little as possible bad stuff in there, and, and it's yeah. full of good for you nutrients that that fuel the body and give body, body, the body the energy to 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 be healthy. So, how do you find this food? How do you find these ingredients? Yeah, so we we look. I mean, the word superfood we all know is kind of is, 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 is like a, a made up term. But we define uh, superfood by the quantity of nutrients that are in in certain uh, foods mm -hmm. and fruits and vegetables, and and um, we we kind of like surround ourselves with nutritionists and doctors, and it seems there's like common ground that there is like some fruits that are higher in antioxidants, are higher in, in nutrients than others. For example, like we have a, a greens powder; it's called the Daily Good Greens, and that's a, an assortment of what many of our experts think is, is a great assortment of, of high nutrients um, and superfoods. Like, for example, Moringa is one oh, of, yes. of uh -huh. them, which is known to be very um, very potent, very high in, in antioxidants. And we have some mushrooms in there, uh, medicinal mushrooms. Um, we have wild organic blueberries in there, which, which are also proven to have more antioxidants than, yeah. than uh, regular blueberries. And... and um, and we have spinach, we have spirulina, we have like these kind of ingredients and we try to mix it together. So it, um, again, we don't add any sugar or anything. Um, right. So we, we try to blend it in a way that's actually appealing. We, we use a patented technology, which um, is also something that we learned around the, uh, along the way that actually many of the powders that you find in the market, probably like 95% of the powders in the market are freeze dried or run dried. Oh yes. And they look, they lose up to 60% of the nutrients, and they are, there's also some chemicals that are added in the process. Because of the heating. Um, 
it, the heating or the freezing. Yeah. And so we have a patent for technology, which is really interesting. It's, it's, it's based on infrared. Infrared. So basically, we make a smoothie with, uh, with our fruits and, and, and vegetables. We puree that and we put it on a foil and we use light technology, infrared technology. Oh, interesting. Um, that, happen, that happens at a very um, gentle temperature. It's almost like body temperature. It's a very slow process and very gently, all it does, it dehydrates the water out of that smoothie and turns it into a powder. So it keeps 100% of the nutrients and it keeps an amazing taste profile. Uh, so it's basically a, a, a powdered version of a smoothie with, without losing any of the nutrients and the, and the flavor. So this is something that we are really proud of. Yeah. So how do you go about sourcing these products? Because that, that seems like the creation of the products are actually fairly simple. It would, it would seem like the actually finding them might be part of the challenge. Yeah, again, so philosophically, we looked at like the first product that we launched, we said, hey, let's fix the basics first. So we all believe food is the foundation of health, but within food, we found that it's, it's still very hard to, to eat a mainly plant-based diet that is, mm -hmm. that is full with, with good nutrients. And even like, you know, when you go to a restaurant, like to find organic, it's, it's hard. And, so, and, and, and we found that most people lack vegetables and, oh, and, yeah. and high quality nutrients. Right. That's, why, yeah. that's why we started the, a product called the Daily Good Greens, which is, is like a, a pretty well-rounded assortment of, mm -hmm. of, of greens and fruits. And also we found that most people have the same deficiencies in some vitamins, for example, omega-3s or vitamin D or some magnesium. Yeah. Uh, so we created a uh, also a very high quality uh, compilation of, of uh, supplements um, to fix that. And um, another thing that I did not know initially, but I learned that my mercury level was through the roof when I got tested uh, yeah. when I came to the States. And I ate a lot of fish oil because I thought that's healthy. But then I was informed that the fish oil that I ate was like very, very, very yeah. high mercury because they use like fish that's, that, that's um, high and mercury. Polluted, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we developed, but at the same time, most people are deficient in omega-3. So we developed or we found a, um, a source of omega-3 that comes actually from the algae that the fish eats in order to get the omega-3. So we basically cut out of the middleman. And, and our algae oil is cultivated in Switzerland in a 100% free uh, um, environment. Yeah. So, so this is how diligent we are with that. So that's, those are the first two products. But then we also found that you know, we, we, we try to promote an active lifestyle. And yeah. everybody who is active should have enough proteins to support muscle, muscle growth and lean muscle growth. Mm -hmm. And... And we all know from from the bodybuilding days that uh, uh, you know they're the, the most protein product out there. They're 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 coming in, in they come in in tops or like in gigantic tins. And right. there's like a, a bodybuilder uh, um, pictured up there, and and it says massive, extreme, hardcore monster. And and those are usually all the chemical um, uh, compounds oh, yes. and, and yeah. derived from 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 whey protein. But at the same time, also. We want to cut down on the meat consumption, so we said, okay, we want to give people an alternative for a like clean protein, which does not come from from animals and doesn't come from whey protein. So we decided to create a, a very clean plant-based protein that has a very nice amino acid profile. So we use three sources of proteins: we use hemp protein, pea, and pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Again, everything is uh, certified organic. And uh, we don't even use stevia. Most other products use stevia. We we don't use stevia. We use like real vanilla extract and and real like everything is like superfood based and real food ingredient based. And it tastes actually also really good. So it has a nice amino amino acid profile. It has 18 grams of proteins per serving, and it tastes really good. So and, and that's our thinking of like okay, how can we help? Uh, people, I do it to cut down my my meat consumption and uh, and and still like I, I work out a lot and and still be fit and and agile and and have like promote like lean muscle growth. Yeah. So one of my good friends is uh, Jake Mace. He calls himself the vegan athlete. Do you know Jake? I think I've heard of him. Yeah. Um, 
he's here he's here in Phoenix, the Phoenix area and he's a vegan and he's been a vegan for a very long time and he's built uh you know he's 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 built nicely you know he's got nice muzzles yeah. six pack yeah. and so it is possible then to you know to stay fit and not eat animal proteins absolutely it's I, although i think it's not so easy because you have to you have to have a well balanced diet yes. and probably also uh, supplement some of the uh, nutrients that you get from from a um, animal based diet but it's certainly possible yeah absolutely cool and the benefits of of your plant based protein or your plant plant based diet are uh, it's a lot of health benefits can you tell us about those yeah it, 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 again like it's high everything we offer is high nutrients and um, like we feel it, like like since ever I started Aloha, I've been consuming Aloha product. I'm almost never sick, and I live again. I live still in in, in New York. Although mm-hmm. the company is called Aloha, so I have some time. <laughs> I have a good reason to spend more time on Hawaii, but the company still keeps me busy here. So I, I live this hectic hectic life here in the city. Um, but uh, I, I I'm really healthy. I feel very energized just by eating. Um, a lot of, I, and I, I don't want to promote like a, a diet based on on, on uh, packaged food. So I try to eat as much as possible close, like directly from from Mother Earth. But I supplement it with with our products. So certainly health benefits, um, energy, and focus. Those yeah. are the main health benefits. Yeah, you know I've noticed since uh, since going to a plant based diet, my uh, fuzzy thinking has gotten clearer. Um, especially, you know, especially when I'm interacting with people and reading bios and, uh, you know, on the air. So I've, I've really seen that, mm-hmm. that, you know, there's been some benefits for me and I, you know, I'm, I'm clear that it's not the only way and it's, it, it, a plant-based diet is the way that works for me. Um, and I, you know, I love when people come on and share about it. So thanks. Awesome. So I'm going to shift on you and I'd like for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure and what you might've learned from it. So I have failed many, many times. <laughs> uh, welcome to being career. an entrepreneur, right? I feel like yeah, failing is, is part part of the, the the business. And but what what I learned from failing, like for example, like I, with one company, I was working towards a management buyout um, for like over a year, and it was a very big deal. Uh, I brought on investors and we had uh, we were dealing with a major German corporation, and we had to go through M and A. Comedies and many many people were involved, and it took very long. And then all the contracts were signed, and the deal was more or less done. There was a signing, not the closing yet. So after the signing, I went on a vacation to sort of like celebrate the deal, and then recharge myself, and then execute on the on the buyout. But then when I came back, I never heard anything from uh, the post that signed the deal. And then they said, hey our comedies have not agreed to that deal so we are out and I was like what do you mean what the comedy is so there was a little exit clause for them that allowed them to back off the deal and initially I thought okay the world is ending now and that probably lasted for like two weeks um, that I felt that bad and then I I evaluated my options so what, what, are, what are the other options the other option was like to, to sell the company and not to buy it as I had to negotiate the deal up, um, and in the, in the end, it turned out to be a way, way better outcome. So I, I was able to sell it. I was actually able to start something new, which led then into something way bigger yeah. than probably that buyout would have been. So what I learned from failing is, and every single failure, like it seems in the moment when it happens, seems very dramatic and the end of the yeah. world. But then every single failure actually led into something way better, way bigger and way more appealing than I was ever able to, to think. So I think failing is always good as long as you stay positive and stay optimistic and always look for opportunities rather than just saying everything is dramatic. Yeah. Um, so the learning is staying, staying open to new opportunities and the new opportunities will come. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I, uh, I'll get accused around Phoenix of being this happy guy. Um, you know, people people say, yeah, you know, you're always so happy. And 
I say every morning I have a choice. I have a choice on whether I'm going to choose to be happy or choose to be miserable. And when things happen, this is really the reason I asked this question about failure. It's, you know, when things happen, you have a choice. Exactly. And I've often found exactly what you just said, that it's better the next time around. So, yay. What, what, What I also found... A learning was when, like, what definitely changed my life was when I started to write down my goals. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, in, when I was around 18, I attended some Dale Carnegie uh, seminars, and one of the exercises was to write down my funeral speech. Yep. And it sounds really, sounds very awkward. Yep. Uh, it's it feels also awkward initially, but then when you think about your life from a basically bird's perspective or angel yep. perspective, yeah, and you think about like what 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 do I want people say about me when I'm dead? Um, about what do I have achieved in my life, and not only business but family and contribution to society, mm-hmm. to the world, and what kind of character, friends, and everything. That was actually really uplifting, and, yep. and so I wrote my funeral speech, and um, then I trickled it down, like, okay, where do, where do I want to be when I'm 60? Yep. Where do I want to be when I'm 50, yep. 40, 30? So I started to do that 10-year goals, and then I break the 10-year goals down to five-year goals and then to yearly goals, and now I, I still do, I have a habit, basically, of writing down my goals. For example, now my next goal would be, um, like, until until Easter or until my right. birthday. like. Yeah. I write them down, but based on not only like one element of my life, mm-hmm. but on on all the aspects. Like one aspect is my body and my health. The other one is my my family and friends. Uh-huh. The other one is my career. The other one is like, what do I want to learn? How do I want to improve my life? Mm-hmm. And, and like like all the all the, the the several pillars are really important. But writing down the goals and having them really sort of like crystal crystal clear. Yeah. And that that really helped me a lot to to achieve to achieve more than I did before. Yeah, and I I have to tell you I had to laugh a moment ago. I did Dale Carnegie too when I was eighteen. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Did you do similar similar exercise? Yep, or? yep, absolutely. And I've actually done that a couple of times since. In some, um, I'm a yogi, and so I, I practice yoga. Yeah, so I've done that before. It is a very valuable very valuable thing to do i i even i even do do it also like on on a weekly basis like on on a sunday i write down my week goals yep and then i check in either like the the, the evening before or the morning of the day like what are my daily goals Mm -hmm. so it really really helps to to get more things done and yeah also to overcome to overcome failures and there's failures every day yeah exactly so what do you consider your biggest success uh I think, I think it's a mindset. Uh, to your point, um, optimism, mm-hmm. being optimistic. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think I'm 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 lucky because that was something that I was maybe born with, and in combination with a sort of like entrepreneurial gene um, that I, I just want to create things, and 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 in that combination, and also maybe like one learning when I sold my last company. I almost started a new business in Brazil, which would have been office supplies for Latin America. Uh-huh. We had everything in place. We had investors in place. I had a team, uh, partners, co-founders, everything. I, I had a, I had a block, blockade. I, I couldn't do it. And I was thinking, like, why, why can't I do it? And, and why can't I do it? And I realized I'm not passionate about office supply for Latin America. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and it was an, an aha moment for me, a aha moment. <laughs> yeah. I, I realized I had to do something meaningful in my life. Yeah. And my goal was always to to make a contribution to, to this short time that I'm on this planet. And, and what kind of contribution can I constantly make uh, to help live a better life? And, yeah. and my goal was, I, I thought there's two ways to do it. The one is the Bill Gates model, make a lot of money first and then devote that money uh, towards a cause uh-huh. but I always felt like the ideal scenario is to, to do like a daily job that I'm I'm really passionate about that has a purpose 
and uh, that also can make some money at the same time. So, so I, I think probably the biggest success for me was finding Aloha and starting Aloha instead of this other office supply well, and, and doing yeah. something that I'm that I'm truly passionate about and and having a business that can sustainably grow uh, while while helping people and while for me also helping me because I, I learn every day. I have great conversations like this one. I meet everyday like-minded people and, and it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, and that is so incredibly important to do what you love. So exactly. what, what drives you? It's probably that, um, like, like the combination between my, my goals that I set, uh, for myself, like that I wrote down <laughs> and I, I have a lot of big goals. Like in, uh, one book that inspired me in the early days was, again, I was a teenager when I read that, but uh, it was Brian, Brian Brace's uh, book called Thinking Big. And basically, in this book, he says, think big and, and don't, uh, don't, don't think small, think big, and everything yeah. is possible. And, and my, if you read my, my, my goals that I write down there, what are big goals, and I really want, you know, like... Um, and, and those big goals drive me. Like, um, that, like uh, I want to go after these goals. I want to make progress. I want to make this contribution. And, yeah. and this, this, this life, this kind of like life goals, th those drive me every yeah. day. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm all about education. And I have to know, is there a book that's been influential for you in this process in your life? Yeah, as I mentioned, like uh, probably like in the early teenage days, Brian Tracy's uh, book Thinking Big. But then I was also fortunate uh, to have a friend uh, who's a fellow kite surfer and a and real, uh, really inspiring entrepreneur. His name is Richard Branson. So, <laughs> so Richard, Richard is certainly uh, an inspiration for me, like for many different reasons. He's a, he's, he's a great entrepreneur. He, he does many things that uh, contribute uh, to, to world problems, to the five solutions around world problems. But he's also really fun, very humble, very family orientated uh, guy. Yeah. Uh, and he loves to kite surf as well. So, and he's an inspiration for many uh, of my entrepreneur friends as well. And, and uh, he, has, he has some books. He just came recently out with a book called Screw It, Let's Do It. Um, <laughs> I, I like, like that. I, yeah, I like that. I like his mindset. And, and recommend this book. Beautiful. So what one final piece of advice you have for our listeners? My final piece of advice would be write down your, your goals, think big, but write them down. Like don't just type them into your um, uh, notebook or, or uh, iPhone. Physically write them down. Take the time. Do it maybe when you had a vacation and when you come back fully recharged, take take some time, takes a few days maybe. It will give you a lot of motivation. But then also don't make the mistake to only focus setting goals on one area. I think mm -hmm. life is much more than just business or just yeah. living healthy or just having friends. It's the balance. It's all about the balance. That's actually my one of my themes. It's it's, it's really all about the balance. So make sure that you you are healthy, but also make sure you have like goals around career path, around relationships, because what's a career without having relationships and family and friends yeah. and and um, and also, I think having enough sleep and, and embracing mindfulness and spirituality is also key. So, my my advice is write down goals, have big goals, but have balanced goals balance. around all the aspects in in in, in life. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show and sharing your experience with us today, Constantine. It has been a treat getting to chat with you. It was my pleasure. So thank how you. can I, how can our listeners get a hold of you? So I I kind of like um, rather active on on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I have an uh, Instagram page, uh, Constantine Bizan, like my first name and my last name, and I'm very responsive there. So Somebody wants to get in touch with me. Perfect. Feel free to just send me a message on on Instagram and or Facebook, and uh, that's probably the easiest way to get in touch. Beautiful. And you can also find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org backslash aloha. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. 
Greg Peterson here, and I want to thank you for listening to the Urban Farm Podcast. We wouldn't be able to keep doing these great shows without you. So as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you access to a list of our top 10 episodes I personally find most inspiring. If you enjoy the Urban Farm Podcast but don't have time to listen to every one, then you will love this list. Although all our guests have great information to offer, if you are short on time, these 10 are must-listens. To get access to the top 10 most inspiring podcast episodes, text FARMER to 44222. That's FARMER to 44222. And enjoy listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.